Hi, my name is Ben. I'm the production manager for Cyvex, and today we're going to be having a little chat about lambdas. So, lambdas, what are they? They are oxygen sensors, and these guys can be, uh, can be the difference between you having a very well running engine and a very poorly running engine. And I mean, you could be talking about damage, um, you could just be talking about overfueling, things like that. Transient fueling comes into it, all that kinds of things. So, what are they doing? So, a lambda sensor is uh, essentially a, um, a probe that sits inside your exhaust and will measure, quite literally, how much oxygen is passing through the exhaust. So why is that important? It's important because when you add your uh, air and fuel mixture uh, into the engine, you're looking to achieve a target of an air-fuel ratio. So for instance, you know, 12 and a half to one is quite a common thing for cars that are um, naturally aspirated or turbocharged can be a bit richer. As I mentioned earlier, your air and fuel mixture goes in, it goes bang, and it obviously pushes it out of the exhaust port. Uh, once it gets to the sensor, the sensor, as I said previously, is going to read the oxygen content of what's left. And it's not actually measuring the fuel. What it's measuring is the air that hasn't burnt in, has or hasn't burnt in the combustion chamber and it's going to report back to the ECU and tell it what has happened. Previously, years ago, many people used to run one of these and they used to have a little display on a dash. I mean, that's great and all, and you can see what fuel ratio you're running and all that kind of thing and as a visual thing, but that's exactly it, it's a visual thing, most of the time anyway. So how is your ECU dealing with that? In most cases, for the you know sort of lower end market, it's not, and they most likely are running a narrow band, which is a slightly different sensor. I mean, if you want to know more about that, put a comment in in the um, down below, and we can go further into how narrow band and wide band works. So you end up with a situation where your ECU is telling your car to what fuel it should be adding in, at what boost if there is any, and the reading you're getting is a visual representation of that, not so much an adjustment. Where these are useful is when we start to run a closed loop configuration. And what that means is that your ECU will tell or output a ground or whatever it's, it's doing to trigger the um, injectors and the coils and, you know, and obviously controlling whatever boost goes in there is say X amount goes in and it expects this to report back and say X amount has come out. Where it gets good is where the sensor tells the ECU what it's actually reading. If it's out, then the closed loop configuration will tell, the ECU will tell the engine or control the engine to adjust that fuel to go up or down to make it leaner or richer depending on the air mixture that is left in the exhaust as it passes through. So this can have huge benefits. Uh, the sensors themselves, they, they can vary in, vary in quality. Um, we personally prefer the NTK, uh, the L2H2. Uh, it's a brilliant sensor, it's very versatile. Um, I pretty much dragged mine through a ditch in my car and it's uh, still worked absolutely fine for years. You know, the LSU ones can be a little bit, um, I don't think they're as good personally, but that's, um, you know, obviously depends on what someone's looking to do. And you've also got the Denso, por Denso portion of the sensors, um, which I personally have had zero experience in, um, but I know the R35 GTRs and 350Zs and whatnot run those as stock. If you were looking to go with um, an aftermarket um, oxygen sensor or Lambda sensor, this is probably up there as one of the mo like more expensive ones. Um, the LSU is generally fairly priced in comparison to these. These can be, at the moment, are quite difficult to get hold of because there's a global shortage of them. But we do have these. Uh, these sell with various kits of ours um, and they, some of the kits are a requirement to have this sensor because of how they're set up or how they should be run. If you wanted to know any more about this particular sensor or any more about you know, Lambda in general, um, please consider sticking a comment below. Um, hit the like button and um, if you want to subscribe that would be great as well and we will catch you soon. Yeah.